Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hey, welcome. welcome. We welcome you to Greater Love Live. Uh, we encourage you to get your Bibles, uh, get your notebook, man. Let's get into the Word together. Get you some tea, some coffee, uh, cold juice, whatever you do, bless God. We're excited about the Word tonight, and uh, we thank you for joining us. Hey, God bless you. Let's open up with a word of prayer. We want to get right into the word. Cause we know how that time be doing. Time, time flies away, bless God. Yeah. So we don't want to waste no time. Bless God. So Father, we love you. We praise you. Father. We bless you, Father. We thank you for this. Another opportunity you've given us to gather together around your word. And we decree tonight, Father, blessed are our eyes for they see you. Mm -hmm. Blessed are our ears for they hear you. Yes. Our hearts are blessed. Our minds are blessed. And Father, we decree that we shall hear all that you, Father, will have for us on tonight. And we give you all the glory, all the honor, it all belongs to you. Speak to us tonight, Holy Spirit. Encourage us and strengthen us. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen. 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 Bless God. So let's open up with Genesis 1:26. Bless God. Genesis 1, verse 26. And of course, we know we, 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 we're talking about seeking the Lord. And uh, we're going to pick up, you know, we're going to just continue on from where we left off last week. Um, last week we talked about it must be vital And tonight we'll be discussing The deception of pride Alright, so that's good, stay with me Just stay with me, alright Genesis 1 verse 26 And it reads And God said, let us make man in our image After our likeness Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea Over the fowl of the air Over the cattle and over all the earth And over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth So God created man in his own image In the image of God created he him Male and female created he them and God blessed them and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish your, subdue it, have dominion. All right? We understand that. Yeah. And as, we, as we've been sharing for the last month or so, that this is, we, we was created for fellowship. We see right here God created mankind for fellowship. He wanted a family. He wanted someone to get it, to fellowship with. All right? Now, God is huge on fellowship. All right? Now, uh, uh, we were not, we, here, we were created for this. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I, when I was meditating today, one of the things I, you know, I was hearing in my spirit was, we must understand the difference between created and called. Mm -hmm. We was created for fellowship, mm -hmm. and out of that fellowship, you are called to preach, or you're called to worship, lead, lead, a pe lead people in worship. You are called to be a business owner, mm -hmm. but it all comes out of fellowship. See, what we're getting mixed up at, we say, you know, I was created to preach the gospel. No, he was created for fellowship. Mm -hmm. And out of that fellowship came the calling to preach the gospel. Everything must flow out of your fellowship. Mm -hmm. See, what happens is if you don't if you don't keep first things first, you're gonna you're gonna think you was created to preach the gospel. And and what happens is a lot of you see a lot of pastors, a lot of people that get burnt out. Right. Why? Because they are here doing what they thought they was created to do, not understanding they was created for fellowship. And my ministry or my calling or my assignment, all of that flows out of my thought. You'll get to the point where you're, you're quote unquote, so busy for God that you're not spending time with God. <laughs> he was need, he's never called us to do anything without him. Right. He's never assigned us to do anything without fellowship with him. Everything here it flows through him. So there's a difference between created and called. Mm -hmm. I was created for fellowship. And through that fellowship came the calling that is upon my life and, and, and her life and your life and all of our lives, bless God. Again, what is fellowship? It's a companionship. It's a, it's a closeness. It's a togetherness. God desires to spend time with you and you with him. We saw, we saw, and we, as we've been sharing in, in the garden, in the cool of the day, God, Adam, Adam, where are thou? It wasn't Adam going to God. It was God coming to Adam. Why? I want some fellowship. I want to spend time with this man, with my man I created. I want to spend time with my family. I want to impart. I want to strengthen. I want to enjoy him. I want to fellowship with him. That's always been God's plan, and it has always will be God's plan. If you go to the end of the book, guess what happens? God comes down. He brings heaven down to earth. Yeah. I know everybody's trying to get to heaven, but understand something. You guys, we might get there. We ain't going to stay there long. Why? God is bringing heaven down to earth, and we're going to be here to what? Dwelling together with God. No more division. No more separation. It's all going to be one. All right? So he was, we created us with fellowship. Mm -hmm. And as we said last uh, Thursday, God desires to be a part, mm -hmm. and he desires to be involved 
of in, in every area of our life. Nothing separated. We're not it's not, you know, he's involved with uh the church or the ministry side of it, mm-hmm. but he's not involved with my, my marriage. No, that's not real. No, he wants to be involved in the ministry, he wants to be involved in uh your, your health, mm-hmm. your finances, the marriage, the children, your business, everything you got going on, guess what? He wants to be a part of it. My God. God wants to be your source. He wants to be the one you trust. He wants to be the one you lean on. He wants to be the one you rely on and look to. You know, he, listen, he doesn't want you doing anything without him. Right. He wants to be a part of everything you're doing, everything you're involved in. He wants to be your source of supply. He wants to be uh, everything. Everything. He says, what? Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Don't you do that by yourself. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me bless God. And, that, and uh, let's go, we'll go to Psalms 138, verse 8. We'll jump off right there. Psalms 138, verse 8. All right, Psalms 138. God wants to be a part of everything you're doing, man. Don't do anything without the Lord. Don't do anything, man. God, don't do anything without Him. Psalms 138, verse 8 says, The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure forever. Forsake not the works of thy own hands. And as we shared last week, this, this, is, this is most blind. It's mind blowing that the God of all the universe. <laughs> the God that created the sun, the moon, the stars, all the heavens, the birds, he, he created the seas. He, the, the God that created all these different things, guess what? He's concerned about me. Oh my God, man. Are you serious? He's concerned about me. He wants to talk and to fellowship with me. See, that's the difference between this religion. Religion, religion, as we saw in the song on Sunday, said he's not, well, uh, religion have him as a God out hiding in the mountains. Yeah. A religion to have a who have a God uh, a way distant off in the in the galaxies, mm-hmm. yeah. but that's not true. Mm-hmm. The God of the universe, He's concerned about me, man. That's right. That's right. He's concerned about me. So He says in Philippians, He says, "Listen, be careful for nothing mm-hmm. in everything, prayer and supplication, and you know, with thanksgiving, what." Let your request be made known unto God. He, we have a God who wants you to come to him. Bring, bring it to me. Don't you worry about anything, baby. Come to me. My God. Come to me. Don't you worry about that. I got you. I got you. I'm concerned about you. He says in 1 Peter 5, he says, like, casting a hold of your care upon him. Why? For he cares for us. Amplified says all your worries, all your cares, all your concerns, all of it. Give it to me. I got you. I'm responsible to take care of you. And only thing, only thing we got to do is let God be God. Let God fulfill his ministry in our lives. And what is that? That he is here to take care of us. Mm, man. Man. Let him do it. Let him supply. Let him heal. Let him comfort. Let him make whole. Let him restore. Let him do what he desires to do, which is what? I take care of you. Man, we, 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 we. We got to let God be God. I keep, I keep hearing it. We got to let God be God. Yeah. All right? Now, as we shared last week, as long as you think you can live without God, yeah. hear it, you will. Mm-hmm. As long as you think you can, you will. Mm-hmm. God can no longer be an optional. He can't just be, again, something we do every now and then or something we do on, res- uh, on Easter Sunday or, or Christmas. You know, you get your Easter suit. I'm going to church. You're going, it's Easter Sunday. No, you can't mess up that. God wants a relationship with you. Right. My God. So as long as you think you can live without him, you will. But the question we saw last week in Proverbs, the question was, how long? How long How long do you think you can carry on without him? So Hosea tells us, hey, break up the foul ground. Why? It's time to seek the Lord. It's time, man. Because at some point, you know, and as we shared last week, you, at some point you come to the end of yourself. You tried your plans. Mm-hmm. You tried your 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 ten steps, and you tried all of these different things. You tried all the help books. Thank God for all of that. Thank God for your help books. Thank God for your vision board. Thank God for all of that. But then listen to me. Break up the fallow ground. It's time to seek the Lord. Yes. My God, help us, Jesus. Good God. So, what does it mean to seek the Lord? Let's 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 go there. Proverbs two. Let's 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 see that. What does it mean? Because again, as we shared last week, as leaders and pastors, a lot of times. We got we to gotta remember, we got our own language in the church. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, somebody can be logging in, and we hear, we, we hear, they hear us say, seek the Lord. So they're like, well, what does that mean? You know, you got to understand something. A lot of times, we got to break stuff down because it, a lot of people might not understand the church language. Right. 
and then we may understand it because we've been saved 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So you know when somebody says, see, Lord, I'm seeking them, Pastor. But there may be, <laughs> there may be someone who doesn't know the lingo of right. the church. All right? So we got to make sure in our pool pits and in our teaching sessions that we're helping people understand what are we saying. Mm -hmm. Because if we're just church speaking our language, they don't understand it. What's the point? They're missing it. So what does it mean to seek the Lord? Bring it home to them. Yes. Proverbs 2, verse 3 says, Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifted up thy voice for understanding, if thou seeketh her as silver, and searcheth for her as for hid treasure, then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord, and shall find the knowledge of God. So he says, listen, seek her as silver, and search for her as hid treasure. As we shared last week, let me tell you something. We must be willing. I mean, we're, we're willing to seek some silver, man. We're willing to put some time in and get some money, man. You know what I'm telling you? I mean, we're willing to give people 40, 50, 60, 70. All right, bless God. We back. Sorry about that. So, some technical difficulties. Uh, you know, you know, you know, the enemy don't like this kind of carrying on, and I don't blame him. You know, he, he'd be all right. My God. But let's go to, uh, uh, let's see. Let's go to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 29. It will be all right, bless God. This gospel will go forth. <laughs> My Lord, it's a little technical difficulties, but it will be all right, bless God. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. So it says, for I know the thoughts I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end, my Lord. Then he said, Then shall you call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me when you hear it. Search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. Amplified verse 13 says, Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity. Man, God in these last days has to be a vital necessity yes. to work for us. Mm -hmm. That we have to make, we just got to make up our minds that I cannot live without the Lord. All right. That's right. All right? Vital. One definition of vital, we say, is, is, is life pertaining to or contributing to uh, what's necessary to live. My God. Mm -hmm. That which life depends. When something is vital, it says that which life depends. I remember being in the hospital and they keep coming in your room and saying, Look, I got to check your vitals. Why? Because we got to make sure everything is formed right. Why? But this is what life depends upon. So when something is vital, you're telling the Lord, you're vital to me. I, I My life depends upon you. Right. That's right. My Lord, man. And, and John 15 verse 4. So, so he said, listen, God said, you got to require me as a vital necessity. I just can't be something you do every now and then. I just can't be something, you know, you know, no, God has to be vital. Mm -hmm. He has to, you got to make up your mind. I need God in my life, in my children's life. Oh, my yes. God. Yes. Mm. You got so many things. We got so many things trying to get our children. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Again, I share often, when we was growing up, the only thing we knew about was what was going on in our neighborhood. <laughs> That's right. Now... Your babies, yes, at the touch of a button, have access to the whole world. That's right. You got people trying to get your baby's attention. You got you got commercials. You got you mm -hmm. got you got commercials on YouTube and Facebook. You got all these different things with an agenda, mm -hmm. as we shared on the prayer line. These things have an agenda, mm -hmm. and and they're trying to sow seeds. And her brother Dollar shout the time. It's a television. Right. They're telling a vision to your children. Mm. You need to be in church. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord. You need your babies to be in church. Mm -hmm. I'm the pastor. I'm sorry. I just gotta I gotta say it. I mean, don't 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 shoot the message. You know, you need you need you need your spouse in church. Don't just bring them to church. Come on in with them. Yes. Mm -hmm. You need your babies. Oh God, I hear the Lord interacting with the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. My God, yeah. you need—they need to learn how to hear from God. Yeah. 
They need to learn how to praise God. Them babies need to know how to worship the Lord. That's why I love seeing them babies up there singing Sunday. I, it's beautiful to me. Why? Mm -hmm. They're interacting with yes. the Spirit of God. Oh my God, man. What? That's right. That's right. Mm, man. Yes. I don't know where we at. Good God. John 15, verse 4. You need, you need, you need to be in the house. Right. You need to be with them seeking the Lord. You need your children seeking the Lord. That's a decision that has to be made. That you as the head or the spouse or whoever, you're making that decision that, hey, I'm making it vital necessity in my life. And because you are under my roof, yes, it's vital necessity for us all. We have to seek the Lord as a family. We have to seek him. It's, it's, it's something that, you know, um, the word tells us is one thing that I desire, that I seek after him. I'm seeking him. I'm seeking him with all my heart, as the word just told us. That's what we have to do. We have to make up your mind. And the word says, I, I. So that means you're making the decision. No one else is making that decision for you. You're making the decision that I have to seek him. I have to make him a vital necessity in my life. Hmm. Have to. Period. Have to. Have to. Period. You know, you're thinking about all the things that the kids are, as Pastor just said, everything the kids are exposed to right now my in this day and time. God. They need to be seeking the Lord because they need to know how to handle these situations. They need to know because, for one, they're going to come to us with the questions. So we have to have the answers because we're going to get them from him, right? Mm -hmm. And the more time we're spending with him, the more we have the answers for our children that have all this access on the internet, on the social media, and all the different things that, as Pastor said, in their vision of how life should be. Mm -hmm. But we, as a parent, have to establish what it is. Mm -hmm. We have to establish that. And if we are making him first, the children will see that, hey, mom's making him first, dad's making him first. They'll see that, hey, this is the example that I have to follow. Mm -hmm. And these people, are spending millions and billions yes, of dollars here yes, to tell their vision. Tell their vision. Mm -hmm. And then you get to church. We don't want to spend no money at all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. These people will spend millions of dollars to get your children's attention. Yes, they will. But then it comes down to the church. That's too much. Mm -hmm. We got to, we got to, we got to pray about it. We need, we need, <laughs> we got to take it to the board. If they're telling their vision, we need to be telling God's vision. Yes, yes. My to. God. John 15, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the uh, vine. No more can you except you abide in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine. Mm -hmm. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. Amplify says, a verse, uh, let's see, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever lives in me and I in him bears much abundant fruit. However, apart from me, cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. Cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. I mean, come on, man. It's just laid out. Until you see the Lord as vital... Seeking him won't be deemed a necessity. It won't be need, it won't be important. It won't be vital. Until I see him as vital, right. seeking him won't be a priority. Mm -hmm. oh, Lord. Now, let's 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 go into this. Psalms 10, verse 4. So for the next few moments, we're gonna discuss the deception of pride. Mm -hmm. My God. Yeesh. Psalms 10, verse 4. The deception of pride. Mm -hmm. Psalms 10, verse 4 says, The wicked, through the pride of his continence, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Mm -hmm. Therefore, his ways are always grievous. <laughs> the judges are far from above his sight. As far as all his enemies, he's puffed at them. My God, man. Mm -hmm. Amplify says, The wicked one, and the pride of his conscience will not seek, inquire for, and yearn for God. All his thoughts are that there is no God, so he never punishes, mm -hmm. my Lord. Pride. Mm -hmm. 
What is the main thing that seeks, I mean, that hinders a man or a woman from seeking the Lord? Hear it, pride. What is pride, Pastor? It's, a in, it's inordinate self-esteem. It's an unreasonable, it's unreasonable conceit and view of one's own importance, superiority, and ability, my Lord. Unreasonable conceit and view of one's own importance, superiority, and ability. It's when you feel like, well, what is the deception of pride? Pride will deceive you into thinking you don't need God. Pride will deceive you into thinking you got it. Mm. I have a plan. Pride will deceive you into thinking that you can live in life without God and still experience the best of God for your life. Mm. Mm. Pride will deceive you into thinking that a relationship with God, His Word, and His presence mm. is unnecessary and unimportant. Good God. That stuff, I, I ain't got time for that. Mm. I, ain't got, I, ain't, I ain't got time for, for, for God, his word, his presence. I ain't got time for that stuff. Mm. I have a plan. Mm. I have a busy, I have, I'm busy. I'm working my plan. I'm doing my thing. <laughs> I ain't got time for all that stuff. I ain't got time to be seeking no Lord pastor. Mm. No, baby. Pride has deceived you. Pride has deceived you into thinking you can do this thing called life without God. Mm -hmm. Because we just read in John 15, he says, for without me, you can do nothing. Mm -hmm. So pride has deceived you into thinking you can do it right. without him. Right. Mm -hmm. My Lord, man. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. You have been deceived into thinking, I got this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got my five-year plan. Mm -hmm. I ain't got time. I ain't seeking no Lord. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for all that. No, you, you're deceived. Yeah. You thinking you can make it. You thinking you can do this thing without God. First John. Go in the five year plan, aren't you still coming to him? Why not just come to him first before you make out the five year plan? Before you plan out everything, come to him first and walk with him. And he's going to show you the way. You know, you can't do it without him. Mm -hmm. As the word just told us, you can't do it without him. So don't try to plan uh, five years ahead when he's already, he's already had the plan and the purpose for your life. He already knows the steps that you need to take. So just follow him. Follow him and don't come into pride and thinking that you can do it all by yourself when we can't. Mm -hmm. We can't do it all by ourselves. Man, shoot. That's, that's an unreasonable view yeah. of yourself. You can't do it. You can't do it. That's an unreasonable view of your own importance, yeah. superiority, and ability. You can't do it. The fact that you think that you can manage your own life. No, you can't. But I'm going to tell you the truth. Let me let you know the secret. No one manages and leads their own life. No. Someone is leading you. Mm -hmm. Either the Holy that's Spirit right. or the devil. Yeah, that's right. But you're not, you, it's, it's not in you to lead yourself. Mm -hmm. someone, is, someone is leading you. Yes. Hmm. 1 John 2, verse 15. Watch this. It says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. You got to hear that. Mm -hmm. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm -hmm. Why? They will always be competing with one another. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, no man can serve two masters. Mm -hmm. You cannot serve who? God and man. And why? They're going to be competing for your attention. Yeah. When God is telling you, seek me, seek me, seek me. The world is saying, no, we got what you need over here. You don't need God. My God. Hear, what, hear this world system. The world system is trying to convince mankind, and has always, from the garden, been trying to convince mankind, you don't need God. We got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He cheat from the beginning. Adam and Eve. Has God said? God <laughs> surely knows. What is he trying to do? He's trying to convince them. We don't need God down here. We got this. Why? So he said, listen, he that loves the world, he said, what? The love of the Father, not him. Why? There's, there's a, they're always going to be competing. You can't serve two masters. Mm -hmm. You cannot seek God and seek the things of the world. No, you can't do it. No. Mm -hmm. And so many people are so consumed. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, during the pandemic, 
They said all this other stuff was 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 a necessity, was necessary. But they said, no, but you can't go to church because we don't see that as vital. We don't see that as priority. That's how they think. Listen, we'll keep the ABC store open because you got to get your drink. But worship, no, y'all can't do that right now. We're going to shut y'all down. Why are you serious? It wasn't being a necessity. Why? But that's how the world thinks. But then it says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and here it is, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of who? The world. Amplified of verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving the sensual gratification, the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources, or in the stability of earthly things. So what, ha- what does the world try to do? It tries to get you uh, uh, assured. It tries to get you confident. It tries to get you relying on the things of this world. I don't need God. I got a good job. Ooh. I don't need God. I got health insurance. I don't need God. I got this. I don't need God. I got that. And so what happens? I don't see seeking God as a necessity because the pride of life says what? I got everything I need in the world. Mm, my God, man. Yeah. Only thing. If I love the world, it says the love of the Father is not in me. I don't see no need to seek it. Why? Because I feel like everything I need is already in the world. And mm, mm-hmm. my God. And if it's and if we're not careful, our messages from the pulpit strengthens that mindset. Yeah. Help us, Lord. The pride of life, all of that's in the world. Yeah. I don't need God, I got this. Mm-hmm. I don't need God. I got a. I got my bank account set up. I don't need. I don't need any. I don't. I don't need. I don't need church. I got all this. I don't need to seek the Lord. Oh my God. It's pride. Mm-hmm. Pride will deceive you. It will deceive you. Yeah. My yeah. Lord, man. Yeah. Obadiah one, verse two. Pride will deceive you. It'll cause. It'll cause. Pride will try to divide your heart. Mm. And truthfully, what it's really trying to do is, is to get you to, to, to depart. Yeah. To come away from. Right. It is. Why? I, I don't see I don't see seeking the Lord as a necessity. Mm. It's not a priority in my life right now. Man. Until this world system gets shaken. <laughs> Until, as we shared before, these things we trust in. Their foundation starts moving. Mm-hmm. Then we realize, hey, then maybe this thing I trust in, maybe it's not too sure. Right. Obadiah 1 verse 2 says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Why? The pride of thine heart has deceived you. The pride of your heart has deceived you. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, Whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt yourself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Oh my Lord. Look what he says. I'm going to bring you down. Why? Your pride, the pride of your heart has deceived you. You have been deceived into thinking you can live without God in the world. If you think you can live without God in this world, hear it. You have been deceived. There's no reason the houses of God aren't overflowing. Mm-hmm. There's no reason for it. What's going on? Where's, where's the hunger? Where's the thirst? Somehow... The deception that I don't need God has crept into people's hearts. And now, I don't need God. I need to get a better 401k. I don't need God. I need to get a better insurance plan. I don't need God. I got this. I don't need God. I'm going to get another job. 
and you're working two, three jobs and you're tired. You're tired. And you're not, and, 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 and if you work at two, three jobs, you ain't there with the kids, so who's raising the children? Let's go back to that television. Mm. Oh my God, man. Let's go back to that television. So you at work, and these other agendas, sowing seeds into your children. And then you're like, well, my God, why is little Johnny acting like that? Because we're too busy seeking other things, the things of the world, and we're not seeking God, man. We're not, we have, we're not making God a priority. Who is behind it? Revelation 12. You know who's behind it. You know who is behind this foolishness. You, I, I, you know who he is. <laughs> you know his name. Revelation, let's go Revelation 12, verse 9. My God. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. And Satan. It gave all his names. <laughs> that was Satan. <laughs> Listen, you know, we're going to make sure, sure you know who he is. That dragon. He called the what? That old serpent. That devil. Satan. What did he do? He deceived the whole world. Read it, man. Who deceiveth the whole world? He was cast out where? And placed into the earth. And his angel was cast out here with him. Who's behind the deception? The very spirit of pride himself. That old dragon. That old serpent. That Satan. That devil. He is here to what? Deceive the whole world. You don't need God. You don't need him. You don't need no, you don't need, you don't need to read your Bible. Praise. Praise for what? You don't need no, man, let me tell you something about this, this music industry. This stuff is dark. Do you hear the songs? Mm, I ain't called no songs out. I'm just saying the songs. They're getting, they're telling your young girl that, the, yeah, and, and, and all, and then you got, you got, you got your, your young men listening to songs that's, that's, that's promoting mm -hmm. uh -huh, other yeah. things. Uh -huh. and, 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 and Satan is behind it. Mm -hmm. He deceived who? The whole world. Whole world. <sighs> I can't even listen to some of that music. Like this new rap stuff. No, and I love rap. I enjoy some rap. You know, I grew up on rap. I still listen to rap. Christian rap. And, but but that, this new stuff, what? What? All the songs talking about uh -huh. majority of the songs talking about sex. Mm -hmm. Yes. I know. Yeah. And you got your young girl, your young daughter back there just bobbing her head. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm gonna keep riding. Yeah. Satan deceives the whole world. Uh -huh. What is the deception? Right. You don't need God. You don't need him. You don't need him. Either. Our church is right beside a car wash. People will on Sunday wash their car right beside the church. <laughs> because I gotta get my car ready for my work week. Cause I gotta I gotta go to work. But that's stuff they're doing over there. I got time for that. My God, man. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. He deceived the whole world. Yeah. Here's the question. Have you been deceived? Yeah. Has that that spirit of deception crept into your house? Mm -hmm. mm. Gosh. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. You have to be willing to examine yourself to find out has Satan come in? You know, have we allowed him to speak to us? You know, because he's the only one that's going to tell us that we can't live without God or we can't do anything without God. He's the only one because he doesn't want us to have a relationship with him. He doesn't want us to be close to him. He doesn't want us to seek him. He wants us to lose focus. He doesn't even want us to think about the things of God at all. 
So we have to examine ourselves and hey, humble ourselves also and find out, hey, where am I with this? Mm. Am I trusting God? Am I seeking God? Am I inquiring him? Am I requiring him? Is he's a vital necessity in my life? You know, you have to humble yourself and just examine yourself right where you are. And it doesn't matter who you are. You know, it doesn't matter what title you hold. Examine yourself right where you are because you can be a pastor or a leader and have been, as Pastor just said, you've been dipping on both sides. You know, you're allowing the word to feed you, the world to feed you as well as trying to allow the Father to feed you as well. You have to make up in your mind which side you're going to live. You have mm. to make up in your mind, mm. you know. Now, remember this now. Now, think about this. Mm. We know the enemy, you know, as, as co-pastor you're sharing, he doesn't want you to seek the Lord. Why? He doesn't. Because he knows. You know. God is good. Mm -hmm. Shh. He knows. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is here. Good. Mm. That's right. He knows. He knows. If you sp are spending time with God, who is good, who is love, he'll never get you back. Mm -hmm. So what does he say? You don't need the Lord. Right. You don't need him. Right. You don't need to spend no time with him. Why? Mm -hmm. Satan said he's too, he's good. Mm -hmm. he, I can't let them I can't let them see how good he is. I can't let them see his glory. I can't let them see his goodness. Mm -hmm. yeah. hmm. And that's why he fights so hard. That's why he fights so hard to distract the church from the church. You know, he brings so many different distractions to us. He doesn't want us to stay focused. He doesn't want us to move forward from our past. He does all this to keep us away from our relationship and fellowship with the Father. He doesn't want us to seek him, you know, like mm -hmm. the word is telling us to seek him. He doesn't want us to do that. He wants to stay as far as we can from him. He wants us to be distracted. He wants us to stay in the world. That's not what he wants. That's his agenda. But we have to make up in our mind that we are going to seek him like never before. Mm -hmm. We have to make him the vital necessity. We have to put him first in our lives. We have to make up our mind. That's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. let's, look, let's go look at the prayer about the rich fool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rich fool. Let's look at Luke 12, verse yeah. 15. Now listen to me. We know that, we know, well, Pastor, how does Satan know God is good? Remember Satan? Yeah. He wasn't always like he is now. All right, he he wasn't always like that. He was he was one of the, he was the angel of the Lord. Right. He was the angel of God. He understood he was in God's presence. He knew God's goodness. He seen God's love. He seen God's glory. Well, what made him fall? Mm -hmm. Pride. Right. Remember Isaiah. He says, "I will. I will ascend unto the heaven. I was. I will make my throne above the heavens. Mm -hmm. I will be like the Most High God. I will. I will. I will. I will." And God said, "No, you can be brought low." You can be brought down. Why? Because you have a you have a unreasonable view of your own importance. Yeah. Good God. Mm -hmm. And in this parable, we see a, we see another, we see a rich fool. Let's see it. And he spake a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought within himself, hear it, not the Lord. He didn't seek the Lord. I, I got abundance here. I got all these goods. Maybe I need to seek the Lord about what to do with him. Nope. He see thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? I have no room where to bestow my fruit. He said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. Then will I bestow all my fruit and my goods. I will say to my soul, So, so, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Mm -hmm. But God said unto them, You fool, this night your soul shall be required of thee. Mm -hmm. Then who shall all those things be which thou hast provided? Mm -hmm. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Lord, man. Mm -hmm. Look what he says. I will build a bigger barn. I will. I will. I will. Mm -hmm. I got this. Yeah. So, <laughs> I would say within myself, so, you got enough. You got, you got a bank account full of money. I ain't, I ain't giving no money to no church. I, I, I ain't go, I ain't got time to do no different. I ain't got time for that. I will, I will make my plan. I will work my agenda. I will do this. I will do that. And God calls you a fool. Mm -hmm. 
He calls him a fool. Why? Because you're so busy trying to to to, to establish yourself and your and all these different things in the earth, you're not rich towards God. What do you mean rich towards God? I think it was the Amplified. The Amplified said, um, "So it is." Uh, verse twenty-one. So it is with the one who continues to lay up and hoard possessions for himself mm -hmm. and is not rich in his relation to God. Yeah. My relationship. Is, now when he said rich towards God, he talking about sowing and reaping. Mm -hmm. How, how, how does a man be rich towards God? It's in his relationship with God. Ain't nothing wrong with this man having the money. It's just his relationship with God is off. My God. Ain't nothing wrong with the money. Thank God for the money. Thank God for the house and the car and your 401k. Thank God for all your insurance. Thank God for all that. Whatever benefits God has blessed you with. But make sure your relationship with God is intact. Make sure God is still first. Make sure God is vital. Make sure, make sure God is a necessity. Yes. That's right. If you are constantly talking about what you're going to do, mm. check it. Check it. Yeah. Check it. Check it. Because you don't want that, that spirit of deception. And I got to go back to the question. I, I move, move past it too fast. I got to go back. I hear the Holy Spirit saying go back to it. Hear, hear the question. Mm -hmm. Has that spirit of deception mm -hmm. snuck into your heart or into your household? Mm -hmm. what's, the, what's the sign that it, it has when the things of God are not a priority like they used to be? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My Lord, man. When seeking the Lord, mm -hmm. and at first I'm going for God. I'm, 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 I'm we going to church. But now you you find it's not burning like it used to. Mm -hmm. mm. That fire is not as hot and blazing like it once was. Mm -hmm. mm. That spirit of deception is trying to creep in. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't need to do. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I ain't got to. You know. Maybe you know. I ain't got to. You know. Yeah. I got to seek the Lord. I mean, you know, He He knows my heart. Right. And with that, with the pandemic and everything. Oh that, yeah, it helped it. Oh it, my God. it really didn't help a, a lot of the, the church because oh a lot God. of us just got. Comfortable, oh, got lazy, you know. We started procrastinating. Oh man! You know, it was okay for us just to join online. Oh, we're good with God. that, you know. And half the time when we join online, we're doing other things anyway. We're not oh, really paying attention. So a lot of the pandemic for the last year and a half has played a whole big part with the church. You know, mm. we've got comfortable. You know, we haven't even, you know, as Pastor just said, we weren't, haven't made him that uh, vital necessity. Mm -hmm. We haven't, uh, we're not even seeking him like we used to, you know. You can think about some of us have said that we, we seek him every day, you know, we're in our word, we're playing the word. And now lately, it's just like, mm, I, I get to it when I get to it, you know, I'll seek him when I seek him, you know, but you. But you're not really, you know, sold out like you used to, as, mm -hmm. as old saints used to say. We're not sold out as we used to. And I think a lot of the pandemic and everything that's been happening has played a big part oh, in making the church just relaxed or comfortable <sighs> with the things of God. Yeah. My God, man. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. Pride is so dangerous. Yeah. Let's go to James 4, verse 6. Pride, the deception of pride, it is so dangerous, man. Mm -hmm. And it's so sneaky. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not overwhelming. It's not, it's not a big thing. It's not a big event. It's a subtle creeping in. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a subtle easing up. Mm -hmm. It's a subtle lack of focus. Yeah. Pastor, is this just for it? This is for people who just come into the church. This is for all of us. All of us. We got to make sure we never allow that spirit of deception to creep in mm -hmm. to the point it causes us to ease up because I, 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 I'm I, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
James 4 verse 6 says. Watch how dangerous pride is now. But he giveth more grace. Mm -hmm. Wherefore he said here. God resisteth the proud. Yeah. But he giveth grace to the humble. Mm -hmm. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will what? Flee, Flee from you. Yeah. Look how dangerous pride is. Mm -hmm. God resists the proud. Mm -hmm. One translation said he stands afar off from the proud. Mm -hmm. So when you're walking in pride, God stands afar off from you. Mm -hmm. My God. Look at 1 Peter 5. Let's try to get this in. 1 Peter 5. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want God standing up far off from me. Mm, no. Well, Pastor, what would make God stand far off? Watch this. Maybe, maybe, maybe he's smoking weed or drinking. Maybe, maybe pornography. Maybe lying. Maybe, maybe, maybe he committed adultery. No, that ain't what keeps God far from you. It's pride. It's when you begin thinking, I don't need God. Remember my statement, man. As long as you think you can live without God, you will. And your pride is going to keep you from him. Pride, he said he resists the pride. My God, what? How, how dangerous is pride that it's the one thing God says I resist. Yeah. That he cannot, he, 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 he saw pride in Satan and it brought him down. Mm -hmm. We saw the die. he says, he says uh, the, the, the pride of your heart has deceived you and I'm going to what? Bring you down. Mm -hmm. Oh my Lord. Yeah. First Peter 5 verse 5. Likewise you younger submit yourselves to the elder. Yea all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. Why? For God resisted the proud and gave grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in all, in all, at the right time, in due time, casting all your cares upon him. Why? For he cares for you. Amplify, he says. Man, look how dangerous pride is. God sets himself against the proud. Mm -hmm. What? What? Mm -hmm. You don't want to be doing anything that will cause God to set himself against your household. My God. What do you do when God is set against you? The insolent, the overbearing, the disdainful, the presumptuous, the boastful. He opposes, frustrates, and defeats them. But gives grace, favor, blessing to the humble. God opposes the man that can walk in pride. He frustrates his purpose. My God. So everything this man walking in pride is trying to do, he keeps finding opposition. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God is opposing him. Why? Because if you're not going to seek me, I, I, I frustrate your purpose. Mm -hmm. I frustrate what you're trying to do. My God. I oppose that. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing God says he resists. That's a prideful man. A prideful woman. God resists the pride. Mm -hmm. My God. But he gives grace. He gives favor. He gives blessing. To who, Pastor? The one who will humble themselves and say, God, I can do nothing without you. Right. My God, man. My God, man. Yeah. My Lord. Mm. You got to be looking humble yourself and say, I can't do it without you, Lord. Right. I ain't got no plan without you. I don't got no fire yet, nothing. Without you, is nothing. I can do nothing without you. Nothing. God, I, 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 he, he, he gives favor. He gives grace. He gives blessing. To what man? The man who acknowledges God without you, I am nothing. That's the man God empowers. That's the, I, and I realized that real fast in ministry. I mean, what, I don't forget that one service. I was in the back of the church just boo-hoo crying. Because I, I said, God, I can't do this without you. He said, yeah, you got it now. Thank God for your gifts, your callings, all your abilities. Thank God for all that. But without me, you can do nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. And when you get to that point, God gives grace. He gives favor. He gives blessing. He gives promotion. To what man? To the prideful man? No. no. To the man who is humble enough to realize, I'm nothing without you, Lord. I can't make it without you. That seeking you, Lord, is a priority for my life, for my children. Listen, let me tell you something about my children. The one that's grown, 
now and the ones still have the babies. Church is not optional. Not at all. No. Uh -uh. Now, Pastor, you mean your ch your children perfect? Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Please. No. Pastor, your children make mistakes? What? Yes. I make mistakes. See, no, they make mistakes. My God. <laughs> that, that, that's not even on the table. That's not what we're saying. Mm -hmm. No, we're saying going to church, mm -hmm. honoring God, seeking the Lord. It's not optional in this house. As Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Now, when you get your own house, if you decide to do something else, that's on you and your house. But this house? <laughs> we're going to serve the Lord, baby. And as long as I have breath, and as long as I'm breathing, I, I made that commitment to the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, Lord, I'm going to preach this gospel. My God. We can go to Psalms, and we're going to Proverbs, and we finish. Mm -hmm. Psalms 59, verse 12. As long as I'm breathing. Pride is dangerous, man. It is. That's the one thing God resists. Mm -hmm. That's a dangerous, that's, that's a, you, that's how, you gotta hear how powerful pride is. That's the one thing God stands so far off. He stands aloof. I don't want no part of that. And you gotta humble yourself to be a part of what I'm doing. Mm. Mm, not God, man. Psalm 59 verse 12 says, what we got here? For the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, mm -hmm. let them even be taken in their pride. Mm -hmm. And for cursing and lying, which they speak, my Lord, man. Mm -hmm. Amplify says, for the sin of their mouths and the words of their lips, let them even be trapped and taken in pride, in their pride. Trapped. And taken in their pride. Here, what pride does, it traps you. Mm -hmm. It causes you to be taken away. It causes you to be here, spoiled. Or, or, or it causes you to be robbed of God's best mm -hmm. for your life. Why? You're not, you won't seek the Lord. Mm -hmm. And so you trap. Mm -hmm. You trapped in your plan. Good God. No. You trapped in your 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 little thing. You con up, man. You ain't trying to work. And God was like, "Baby, I got something for you. I know the plans I have for you, like thoughts of peace and yeah. and, and, and give you an expected end." Prophet shared this week. I got, I know what I got for you. Yeah. But my God, you got to come to me. <laughs> but until you come to me, guess what? He said you're trapped in that. You you you're taken, mm -hmm. taken captive in your own plan. Now, it ain't God. God, God ain't got the one taking you over there. You're taking yourself over there. And God is like, hey, come back to me. I got the plan for your life. I got the good life. Ephesians uh, 2.10 tells us a, a prepared, prearranged, predestined, planned good life for you. Hey, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. All you that late, hey, come to me. Come to me. But you're, you're trapped. You're trapped in a, he said you'll be trapped. I'm hearing that. In, in a low-level life. He never intended for you to live all because you won't seek him. Yep. Look at another one. Proverbs 11. Let's, 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 let's go to Proverbs and close it out. Give me five extra minutes, saints, for that five extra minutes we lost. <laughs> <laughs> Proverbs 11 verse 2 says, When pride comes, my God, then come a shame. But with the lowly is wisdom. Yes. Hear the amplified. When swelling and pride come, then emptiness. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. And shame come also. There's an emptiness in pride. Mm -hmm. Good God. Where, hear the emptiness. I worked hard and hard and hard to get the house. But I never get to enjoy it. Because I got to keep working and working to keep it. No. Good God, man. There's, a, <laughs> there's an emptiness in pride. Mm -hmm. that, that I'm working and scribing and I'm scribing and I'm scribing to work my plan. But I never see the fruit of it. No. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm working, I'm working, I'm striving mm -hmm. to, be, to be a great success. But I have no one to love me and enjoy it with me. Mm, my God. Yeah. And 
they do all that. <laughs> and then they end and still, and still be empty. There's still a void. There's still something missing mm. after they try to achieve all that. There's still something missing. I ain't got time for nobody. <laughs> I got to work my plan. Right. You and you're striving and you're, and you're, you're toiling and you're laboring and you're doing all of this so I can be a success. But then look around. Yep. And ain't nobody there celebrating you. No. You ain't got nobody there to enjoy it with you. Mm-hmm. There's an emptiness that comes with pride. Right. Well, God is saying what? I want you to have it all. I want you to have the success. The family, the children, the spouse, the career, the, 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 the whatever. I want God say, I want you to have it all. When pride comes, yeah. then emptiness and shame comes also. Yeah. And if we understand that if we seek him first and stay with him, let him lead us, let him guide us, mm. everything that you are desiring, everything that you need will flow with you. Your spouse, your children, your business, Whatever it is that you are designed will flow with you when you seek him first. Mm-hmm. Understand he has the pre-planned purpose for life for you. He already knows it. So all you have to do is go to him. Mm-hmm. Go to him and seek him first and watch him do everything for you. Right? He's going to plan it out. He's going to tell you where to go. He's going to tell you who to talk to. He's going to tell you everything. Mm. But you have to go to him. Go to him. I thank God for everyone else. Thank God for your family. Thank God for all of them. But you have to go to the one who already has the plan for your life. Mm. You have to seek him first. And a lot of times we get it mixed up because we want to go to mama and them. We want to go to this one. We want to go to that one because we think they have the answers. But you need to go to the one who already has the plan for Mm. your life. Go to him and go to him first. Mm. First, meaning before you go and make that big decision, before you go sign the papers that is to go to school, before you go anywhere and go do anything, seek him first. I'm trying to tell you, you have to go to him first because your life without him is like Pastor's been saying, it's, it's empty. Mm-hmm. It's, it's going to be a void there. You have to go to him and let him fill those voids. Flow with him. Flow mm-hmm. with him. Flow with him. I'm trying to tell you. Proverbs 16, verse 18. Mm-hmm. Is that another one? Proverbs 16, 18 says, Pride goeth mm-hmm. before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. Mm-hmm. Pride will destroy you, man. Mm-hmm. It will destroy your marriage. Mm-hmm. It will destroy your household, your finances, your health. Well, I ain't doing what that doctor told me to do. I'm, I'm, oh Lord, help us, Jesus. I'm grown. Oh Lord. I'm going to eat what I want to eat. No. You know, go ahead, where you can. Go ahead, do what you got to do. <laughs> I'm under grace. Mm-hmm. Well, the key word is I. Right. You're saying I, 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 I. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do. You know, you can tell a person that that, that hasn't sought the Lord because they're talking about I, 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 I. But what did the Lord say? What did he tell you to do? You have to move on what the Lord tells you to do, not what you are feeling that you need to do. Seek the Lord. Mm. Seek the Lord. It's so very important that we seek him. We mm. have to seek him. Let's see another one. Mm-hmm. Proverbs 29, 23. Proverbs 29, 23. Mm-hmm. Right, and it says, Proverbs 29, a man's pride <laughs> shall bring him low, no. but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Here we go again. Look what pride does. It will bring you low. No. And the last one, Proverbs 8, verse 13. Proverbs 8, verse 13. Mm-hmm. says, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Mm-hmm. Watch what God says, man. Pride, arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth do I 
hates. Mm -hmm. That's a strong thing, man, for God to say he hates something. Mm -hmm. I'm here to let you know tonight. God hates pride, man. Mm -hmm. And what is what is the deception of pride? That you can live without God. Mm -hmm. That you can make without the Lord. That you don't need God in your life. Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you right now, that's a lie from hell. Yes. You need the Lord. Mm -hmm. Your family needs the Lord. You need to have your children connected to the Lord. Yes. All of us, we need God in our lives and yes. our families and our homes, man. Mm -hmm. You hear me? You know what I'm telling you? Don't be deceived. Mm -hmm. Don't you let that devil deceive you into thinking you don't need God? Yes, you do. Yes, do. Don't let him uh, uh, deceive you into thinking that your life is so busy you don't have time for the Lord. Good God. Oh, man. As Hosea said, it's time to seek the Lord. Listen to me. If you're not saved tonight, I don't, I don't, I listen, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what you're waiting on here. Come on. Come on in. Let's go. It's time to seek the Lord. You worked your plan. You've done your thing. You come up, you try to do your thing. You try to live without the Lord. And if you be honest, it doesn't work. I could, do, let me tell you something. I, 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 I came to that conclusion really early. That I, I can't, it doesn't work without God. Mm -hmm. I need God in my life. That's right. Listen, I ain't telling you to do anything. Look, I ain't trying to get you to come to church. You come to church, great. I'm not trying to get you to come to no conference, no convention. We ain't promoting nothing. We ain't selling nothing. Mm -hmm. All we here to tell you, man, seek the Lord. Get God involved yes. in your household, man. Yes. You know what I'm telling you? Man, let me tell you something. Taste and see that the Lord is good. God is good. Mm -hmm. God is love. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't saved tonight, you know what I would do? I would get saved, man. Mm -hmm. Knowing this information we know now, man, my God, my God, I should have, I was, I, I just wish I would have done it earlier. Yeah, yeah. You can't live without the Lord. Yeah. So let's make the devil out of a liar tonight. Yes. <laughs> You're like, bring him back tonight. tonight. You know what I'm telling you? Tonight is your night to be saved. Yeah. <laughs> so just repeat after me. You say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. I thank you, thank you for, saving for saving me. For you said in your word. For you said in your word. If I confess with my mouth. I confess with my mouth. Jesus be my Lord. Jesus be my Lord. And I believe in my heart. And I believe in my heart. That God raised you from the dead. That God raised you from the dead. You said. And you said. I will be saved. I will be saved. So right now, Lord Jesus. So right now, Lord Jesus. I ask you. I ask you. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my Savior. Take my life. Take my life. And do something and with you. Do something with you. I receive you now. I receive you now. And I thank you. Thank you for receiving me. For receiving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Welcome, Amen. my brother. Amen. Welcome, my sister. Yes. Glorious. Welcome yes. into the family yes. of God. Hey, man, you made a decision. I'm going to seek the Lord. You made a decision. Me and for me and my house, we're going to seek the Lord. We're going to yes. serve the Lord. Get your household. Get them babies in church. Get yourself in church. My God, get you a Bible. Yes. Find your good church home. You get there. You get planted. Learn about the Lord. Grow in the Lord. Flourish in the kingdom of God. Prosper. Be successful. Man, and see your family restored, man. The best is yet to come. My yes. God, man. Yes. Yes. yes, God. This is the best decision you ever made in your life. Mm -hmm. How can you say that, Pastor? Because I know it's the best decision I ever made, ever made in my life. Right. Right. It was the day I gave my life to the Lord. And I celebrate with you. We celebrate with you that you have given your life to the Lord, man. And you get in there, man. You, 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 my God, you bite down on this thing and don't you let up. You seek for like you will seek for that 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 Powerball ticket out there in that yard. My God, God, if you got something for me, show it to me. I want to know all the promises of God, and you say yes, yes, and amen. You told me to seek first the kingdom of your righteousness. My God, I'm coming after you. That's what I told the Lord. I said, listen, when I come, I ain't playing with you. Now I'm coming. I ain't playing church. I ain't doing this hop back and forth mess. I ain't. I, I never had a desire to leave the Lord. And you pastor, listen the whole time to say I've never had a desire to leave God. Now, Pastor, have you seen since you've been saved? Oh, yeah. Probably the day short, pretty short the day, too. <laughs> but, but, but leaving him ain't on the table, baby. I'm, 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 staying on, I'm, I'm stuck on Jesus because yeah. Jesus is stuck on me. I ain't going nowhere. My God. So, hey, we rejoice with you. God bless you. We thank you for joining us. Hey, Lord willing. Hey, Pastor, why you, why you always say Lord willing? Lord willing, we'll be back here Thursday night. Yes. I, I, I could say I'll be back Thursday night, but I'm not sure about that. So I just say Lord willing. Lord willing. Maybe the Lord might come back before now next Thursday. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen to now next Thursday. But if the Lord is willing, we'll be here. We'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. God bless your heart. We pray the rest of your Thursday is full of God's favor and God's blessing. 
Father, we pray the blessing right now over everyone represented, everyone watching. Mm -hmm. Father, we pray that you'll continue to increase them, Father, and give them a hunger for yes. you, a thirst for you, that they'll be hungry and thirsty for more and more of you. Yes. And we bind that spirit of pride, yes. that spirit of deception. Yes. We curse you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. And I shout grace, grace over everyone watching. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless amen. you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you all for joining us. Bless you.